Hello and welcome to episode 4 in my Factorio 1.1 tutorial series. And in this beginner tutorial, we're going to be covering early game combat. I'm Exterminator, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy and find this helpful. So, I think a lot of people struggle with combat in the very early game. And uh, what I define as early game here is basically the uh, tools you have at your disposal, the combat tools, military uh, weaponry and such. And the type of fighter is going to be fighting for probably uh, about the first, depending on how fast you play, the first, you know, 30 minutes to maybe hour, hour and a half into the game. Uh, really red science related things. So the first science you can get is red science. Um, and it's the most basic. It, you can you can handcraft it. It's, it's pretty simple to make. It's cheap. Um, and that will unlock a few things for you. So... Uh, the, the things you can access with Red Science, uh, military-wise, are uh, armor, uh, which you, you can unlock heavy armor. We're actually not going to cover that. Um, we, we can, but I think you can actually do a very large amount uh, with just uh, light armor or even no armor, which I will show you. Uh, you can also get turrets with just 10 science packs, and then you can also get uh, several types of weapons, uh, hand-carrying weapons, a shotgun and some machine gun for... Uh, 10 red science as well. So these are things you can get very early on. Uh, basically, as soon as you set up a little bit of power, you could handcraft these uh, science packs, put down a lab, put them in, and you can get these this, this research very quickly. Um, so I'm going to show you three examples of how to deal with biters very early on in the game. First one is going to be with a pistol and no armor. And this is something I would not recommend, uh, in particular, using... The pistol and no armor. If you have armor, uh, you're much more, uh, you know, safe using a pistol. Or if you don't have armor but you have a submachine gun, you're pretty well off in that case as well. Um, but having this combination of no armor and pistol is very dangerous, um, and it's going to be very slow to kill anything. Um, I am going to show you uh, fighting these biters in this base, and I may die, and that's okay. That is going to be a good demonstration. Um, so we're going to just walk over here and. If we recall from episode one, uh, holding down the space bar auto targets enemies. And that's what we're going to do for the bugs themselves. As you can see, I am killing them, but it's slow and they are getting to me and quite possibly could kill me here. Um, and you'll notice the whole time I'm moving. And then on top of that, a very key thing here is to focus as they spawn, focus them as soon as they spawn, uh, because what you don't want is for multiple to respawn from the spawner and then uh, attack you and continually do damage. You can see I'm killing them before they even hit me here. So it was just that initial uh, group of like pre-spawned enemies that were the real danger here. But as you can see, this is very, very slow, very tedious. And with one spawner, it is doable. Two spawners is probably pushing it, to be honest. Um, you can maybe do it, uh, but... I would say two spawners is, is very, very questionable uh, doing it with no armor and a pistol and just normal ammo as well. Um, and there we go. So why am I demonstrating destroying bases? Uh, I like to employ the strategy of having a good offense is also a good defense. Now, you certainly can set up a defense, and, and, and if that's more comfortable comfortable to you, that is completely acceptable and fine. If you just want to set up a perimeter wall around your factory and place turrets down on it, that's awesome, and that will actually work great. Um, and honestly, it will probably be safer for you. Now, it's going to be more expensive, um, and you're going to have to replenish the turrets with ammo and stuff fairly consistently. Uh, but if that's what you want to do, you can do that. Uh, an alternative as well to that in a similar vein is to build like little bunkers or, or pill boxes, as some people like to call them, where you will take wall um, and build like a little box and then put a turret or two inside of it and then space, then just space them out so, um, so that the turret range overlaps each other. Um, so we have some turrets here. You can see their range here. Uh, if we, I mean, normally they just show it anyway. So, uh, you know, as long as the turret range overlaps each other, like, you know, like this, then you should be good and you could surround these in walls instead of having a solid wall if you'd like to do that too. Uh, the reason that I like, at least early game, um, doing uh, the offensive strategy uh, is because biters, enemies, will not attack you unless their spawners are being hit with your pollution. Um, so like this base, for example, 
Um, I will never get attacked from this base until my pollution hits it. Now, if you have enemy expansion on, um, they certainly could migrate just naturally because they expand. You know, they, they create new bases, they find new places to build a base and, and expand and migrate. Um, as, as they do that, it's quite possible they could do, you know, move into your pollution, um, just happen to, and then, of course, the base would be in it, and then you could attack. But where this base is right now, this will never attack you. Um, this one, excuse me, um, did actually attack me earlier because my pollution was on top of it because my drills and stuff were working at the time um, and, and such. So if you kill all the spawners that are in your pollution cloud and, you know, even around the perimeter of it on the outside, um, you won't get attacked. And that's just how the game works. Um, and obviously, if you have expansion on, then as you can see, we're being attacked now from this. Um, but if you have expansion on, then it won't... Uh, you know, it won't be a foolproof uh, permanent solution by any means because then they can continue to expand and your pollution cloud will also expand outwards. Uh, so it is maybe a little more tiresome. Uh, you have to be a little more on top of it. Uh, but if you don't want to bother setting up a perimeter wall and supplying your turrets with ammo and stuff, this is also a good strategy. So I showed you that. Um, now I'm going to come over to this base. This one's a little more difficult. This has a spitter spawner. Um, but it has biters and then it has several worms and worms can be tricky um, so this is kind of what i would consider the next level of combat uh, we're going to take a submachine gun and this time we're going to equip an armor um, so i do have cheat mode on to give myself infinite items but we don't have any any like higher level uh like gun upgrade weapon damage upgrades or anything so this is like what you would have before you research any of this um so you're gonna have light armor again it's already unlocked. You don't even need to unlock it, and it's just iron. Um, and then we're going to give ourselves a submachine gun. The submachine gun is quite a bit better than the pistol. Uh, it has a higher range, uh, and it has a faster shooting speed by quite a lot. So this is going to make much quicker work of this. Now, the worms, we have to be very careful. And again, I may die. And if I do, uh, you know, then and this is a good, good demonstration of what not to do. So first thing you need to watch for, when you get close enough, the worm will kind of jump out of its hole here as it did uh, because it detects me. Uh, now, there is this range where it will detect me, um, but it will not. Again, I'm holding space, focusing on the bugs. You can see how much quicker they're dying. Um, but then I'm not actually inside its firing range. However, when you're fighting worms, the one thing you absolutely do not want to do is stand still. Uh, because they have predictive firing, so if you move around, um, especially in like multiple different directions quickly, um, they're going to have a hard time hitting you. If you just stand still, they are going to hit you, and you will die very quickly. Um, as you can see, um, and you know, I accidentally ran into that one, and it does do a fair bit of damage. Um, and you know, this can get quite dangerous. So you have to approach it uh, very cautiously, and if you can find a side. Uh, where you can isolate like the amount of worms attacking you. Um, so instead of approaching from this side, where I would have likely been hit by two worms, I approach kind of from this angle here, where there was only the one worm most of the time that was actually attacking me. And then the same would apply here. Um, and you can, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's slow enough, their fire, where you can kind of, even if you're walking in the direction of it, you can kind of move out of the way. And you can see how much of a difference armor is making. If I was not wearing armor right now, I would have died already. Uh, and this is just light armor. So, I, again, focusing the bugs as soon as they spawn is very important. Um, now, unfortunately, the worms do slightly outrange me. Um, if we were to use turrets, we would be in a much better position here. Uh, now, while you're firing, you do move slower. So you'll notice that I'm firing and then stopping firing and moving. Um, and this is getting tricky because the goop that the, that the worms fire stays on the ground for a good while. Um, so if I get hit by one or two more of these, I'm going to be in for a bit of trouble. And you could focus just the worms if you'd like. Um, and, you know, maybe we actually want to do that in this case. So this is very slow, right? This is a very slow process, but if you don't have turrets yet, um, and you absolutely need to take on a base. This is uh, this is an option. It's just going to be very slow and dangerous. You have to you have to very much be on your feet for this. You'd be on your toes rather. Um, and you know the biters themselves with armor are not a massive threat unless I get surrounded. So um, I can you know let a couple of them attack me, 
And now that we've killed the worms, this becomes significantly easier. Uh, you'll notice this base is dying much quicker with my assault rifle compared to the pistol I had. And then the biters die very quickly. And there we go. So that was hairy there, but it's doable. Now the last one I'm going to show you is using turrets. And this is a trick I get asked about a lot in my streams and videos when I just do this. Uh, because... Um, some people, like a lot of newer players, myself included when I was new to the game, didn't really realize you could do this or how to do this. Um, and this is called, well, there's not an actual name for it, but I, I like to call it just like um, ammo swapping or, or slot swapping. Um, so to use turrets here uh, in a very effective manner, uh, what we can do is put assign them to our toolbar slots here. Uh, one for turrets and one for ammunition. Uh, now you don't have to do this. You certainly can do it without that, um, and it will do, it will work. It'll and you know turrets are very good. They're they're even better than your submachine gun, uh, and it will work. But this is going to make extremely quick work of enemy bases and enemies with this method I'm going to show you. Uh, and this is also going to use a hotkey that I demonstrated in my first episode. Is the Q key, the pipette tool to or picker tool to to grab. Uh, you know, select an item and then put it in your hand if you have it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to click this and we're going to assign this to um, any sort of... Uh, we, we could assign it to turrets here. We actually don't have turrets unlocked. Um, so that is unfortunate. But I will go ahead and do a quick cut here and then come back once we have turrets unlocked and I have this set up. So we're just going to select uh, one for turrets, one for ammo. I'll do that between cuts here and then... Um, I'm going to demonstrate on this base, which I've set up, which is bigger, um, how to actually uh, employ this strategy. So I will see you in just a minute, folks. Alrighty, welcome back, folks. Uh, so we're here, we're going to set these. And uh, I didn't do it off camera just because I wanted to show you one more time how we do it. So we just click this, select the items we want in here. And uh, for now, this is all we're going to need. Um, now, this is pulling from our inventory, and this may or may not be enough ammo. So I'm actually going to transfer... Uh, half by right clicking this and putting it in here um, and we are going to use a combination of our weapon and this so this is a bit more of an advanced technique and it will take some practice so if you want to use this I would suggest practicing this method uh, before you actually go into combat with it would probably be a good idea um, but what we're going to do is we're going to approach this base and you can play it safe or be a little more uh, <laughs> uh, be a little more on the edge with it so if you want to play it safe, you could place the turrets uh, well outside of the aggro range and then kind of pull, like go up and aggro and pull back the initial group of biters. Or what I, what I do, just because I practice this a lot, is I go um, all the way up to where I actually aggro them and then place this very quick. So the, here's a combination of what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, we're going to have these selected. So these are just accessed with our one and two keys. So we're going to have our turrets out. Okay. And... Then as soon as uh, we aggro these biters, we're going to place them down. Now, I'm going to actually place most of these in a box because it's probably not realistic for you guys to be having like a whole stack of turrets right off the bat. Um, I'm going to say we have four turrets, which should be more than enough. Um, now, since I'm in cheat mode, uh, it is quite possible that this is going to uh, just keep giving me more. So I'm going to turn off cheat mode here. Um, so... What we're going to do is we're going to have these selected. And then as soon as I place them down, I'm going to very quickly hit my number two key to bring up my ammo. Okay. So we're going to have this selected. We're going to hit number two as soon as the turrets are down. And then I'm going to hold control and right click. So I'm, hold, I'm going to hold control and hold right click and drag over the turrets. And what this is going to do is it's going to put half of the ammo I'm holding in every single turret. So the first one is, of course, going to get more than the rest. Uh, but... You know, each one will get less, but they will all get ammo. And this is going to be a very quick way to uh, actually place down the turrets and fill them with ammo. And then we're going to also use our gun to fend off any biters that may, uh, you know, not catch aggro from the turrets. So I'm going to run up and do this. Again, you definitely want armor for this, particularly in this situation. And I'm going to get as close as I can. I would ideally like this to be in range to hit the worms. Um, that may or may not be possible. Uh, at least one of the worms if we approach from this side, uh, just because I'm noticing the bugs are kind of over here, we may be able to do that. So I'm going to 
place these down, hit number two, and then hold control and right click and drag over all of it like that. And look how quickly those turrets got placed and the ammo got put in them. Okay, now we're going to pick these up. I'm going to leave at least one um, here to defend me while I place these because this will kill anything that spawns, right, and comes into its range. So I leave that one there and then we're going to do this again. And it's quite possible that these will run out of ammo. So I'm going to take half of this, put this in here. And this is a very quick way. Now we can remove this if we want. And any that get low um, on health, like from worms, uh, you can either pick up, as I just did, or if you have repair packs, uh, you could repair them as well. This does take circuits, so a little more advanced there. Um, and then lastly, uh, some of this went into my inventory, my uh, hotbar slot here. Uh, I'm going to do these again, same thing. So placing the turrets and then holding control and right-clicking. And there we go. We made very quick work of that base. I don't, we took maybe a sliver of damage and we just absolutely demolished three spawners and two spitters, or, or sorry, two worms. So again, have the turret selected and just drag to place them down, have your ammo, and then control, hold control and hold right click and all, you don't even have to click each one, just drag across all of them. And once you get the hang of it, this can be a very, very quick way. We could, you know, if we had, um, you know, enough ammo and some repair packs, we could easily take on a base two, three times the size with this method. Uh, and then once you start getting piercing ammunition and some ammunition upgrades, which do take only red science, the first one's just uh, quite a bit more of it, uh, you, can, you can just absolutely tear through bases. Uh, you know, if you get piercing ammunition and one or two damage and firing speed upgrades, you can just rip through bases, even all the all the even once medium biter spawn. Um, so this is this is my favorite strategy, and of course this is the kind of later stage of early game. Uh, just it's still very early game, but you of course won't have turrets like right at the beginning. So if you absolutely have to fight bugs and kill a spawner like ASAP, then using the two methods I showed earlier with just your gun and armor or no armor. Is obviously going to be what's available to you but if you do get to the point and of having turrets and need to push out this is a very uh, good and very safe method and just to reiterate before we call here if you want to play this safer uh, you can certainly place the turrets or at least one turret or two turrets down outside of aggro range and then walk up aggro the biters and then the the turret you just placed will defend while you place the other ones down and then once you get the hang of it, you can do what I did and just walk up and aggro them and then just place the turrets down really fast. But until you're comfortable with this, um, you know, then then maybe play it a little safer and place some things down out before you even get in their aggro range. And then you can move up and kind of pull them back um, and move forward like that. Uh, and uh, if you if you do have the issue, because, you know, the one issue is when you pick these up, it is actually putting the ammo in my uh, hotbar slot or, or in my, you know, weapon slot here. Um, so if you want to just get rid of this, uh, you could do that if you don't want it to go in here. If you want to just do this, you could like lock this. You can middle click it to lock it to something else if you have like shotgun ammo locked. Um, and, and, and you could do it that way if you just don't plan on really using your gun. Uh, now when you pick these up, um, see when there's no weapon here, it's just going to go right back into your inventory like that. So if you would prefer that, because it does get a little annoying, because if you're if you're not careful, you're going to end up with all your ammo back in here and then not have any in your inventory. And when you go to do it, you're going to have a big problem because you won't have any ammo to put in the turret. So there you go. I hope this was helpful. A little bit of a longer tutorial, but I wanted to you know show you several different demonstrations on how you can do this and explain it the best I could to approach this, because I do get a lot of questions with this. I know a lot of new players struggle with the combat in the game, at least initially and uh, how to deal with the enemies. And this is a very effective method. All of these are effective methods um, throughout all the time I've played. So there you go. It will be a mid-game combat tutorial as well in the kind of intermediate section of this series, uh, which will employ some different methods, including uh, the car and the tank and stuff like that. Those require green science. So those are gonna be just a little farther into the game. Thank you so much as always for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did a like, 
does help as well because it helps other people find the video. And uh, if you're new to the channel and unsubscribed, uh, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications with the little bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes of this series and my other series come out. And I would love to hear your questions, thoughts, and suggestions down in the comments. I'm always open to constructive feedback, uh, anything you would like to see uh, in future episodes and such. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.